Good afternoon. I'm Whit Johnson in New York, and we're coming on the air with breaking news concerning the leak of highly classified Pentagon documents about America's allies, including China, Russia, and the war in Ukraine. We're about to hear from Attorney General Merrick Garland. Just a short time ago, federal agents taking a suspect into custody. You can see the aerial video right there. A member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, FBI agents swarming a home in Massachusetts. A man you can see in a green shirt and red basketball shorts leaving the house, his hands on his head, his hands in the air at times. He was taken into custody. A law enforcement official telling ABC News the suspect's name is Jack Tejera. All of this information follows that bombshell report from The Washington Post, which also identified him as the leader of an invite-only online chat group. Attorney General Merrick Garland addressing the media right now at the Department of Justice. Let's listen. I'm joined today by Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco and FBI Director Paul Bate. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. Teixeira is an employee of the United States Air Force National Guard. FBI agents took Teixeira into custody earlier this afternoon without incident. He will have an initial appearance at the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts. I want to thank the FBI, Justice Department prosecutors, and our colleagues at the Department of Defense for their diligent work on this case. This investigation is ongoing. We will share more information at the appropriate time. Thanks, everyone. Did he have lawful access to these documents, sir? All right, A.G. Merrick Garland, not saying a whole lot, essentially confirming what we already knew there, that uh, Jack Teixeira, uh, a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, was taken into custody. It was FBI agents who arrived there earlier today and conducted that arrest. Uh, one note that we got internally here is that law enforcement brought a considerable amount of firepower because of the suspect's military background. They took no chances with this arrest, but in the end, he was taken into custody without incident. Let's go ahead to Aaron Katursky, our senior investigative reporter, as we're getting more details on this arrest. Uh, Aaron is joining us now live. Aaron, what can you tell us? Whit Jack Teixeira was taken into custody near his home in North Dighton, Massachusetts. This is a rural community in the southeastern part of the state near the city of Taunton. The FBI moved in, as you say, with heavy firepower out of concern for his military background. They did not want to take any chances when they moved in. Law enforcement officials told ABC News the suspect was taken into custody without incident. The exact charges against them are not known, but you heard the Attorney General Merrick Garland say he will be making an initial appearance in Boston Federal Court. We think that may be as soon as tomorrow, Whit. All right, Aaron Katursky, stand by with us for a moment. Again, all this linked to that trove of documents that were leaked on social media, of course, exposing a number of top secret information from the war in Ukraine, information about Iran and North Korea. So let's bring in ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz. Martha, talk about the implications of this information being spread out there on social media and what you've learned about this suspect and his activity online. Well, there are troves and troves of documents with, as you know, they've been out for months. I think that is the most startling thing here, that no one seemed to realize these classified documents were online for months. It started in this group called Discord, and there was a group chat, uh, which people in The Washington Post did an incredible interview uh, with a young man who was part of that group, part of that group with J uh, Jack Teixeira. And he called to share. He did not identify him by name. We now know his name. Uh, a kind of a leader, kind of a father figure in this group. Uh, they had in common, he said, they all like to talk about guns, God, and military gear. He said he thought uh, to share again. He did not identify him by name, but we now know the name. Uh, did this for ego reasons that he wanted to show his buddies, and there were 20 or 30 young men in this group. Group, that he knew things. And he said he would get angry if they didn't watch and they didn't read these documents. And he started sharing more and more. They thought it was just in that small chat group, but someone within that group apparently spread it even further to another chat group. Uh, and then, as you know, it was everywhere. I also want to say that the Washington Post, Shane Harris, who was the reporter, said he saw a video uh, with the suspect in it. And he said 
He's holding a rifle. He is at a shooting range and appears that someone is filming him with the camera and he yells a series of racial epithets and anti-Semitic slurs into the camera and then fires off his weapon. Uh, he said that was something they also did in this chat room uh, is lots of uh, racist conversation. When and, and Martha, one of the remarkable things here is that this is a teenager and he was granted permission by a parent to do this interview with the Washington Post. Again, let's go ahead and take a listen to part of that conversation. We'll, we'll speak afterwards. I was first made aware of these documents, I want to say about six to eight months ago. The documents were often listed as Ukraine versus Russia at first. However, it slowly spiraled into just intelligence about everything. And Martha, one thing that struck me about your reporting this morning was at that time when you were on GMA, uh, it was unclear if federal officials had even spoken to this teenager yet. So it seemed as though the Washington, Port, uh, Washington Post was ahead of the government and getting to the bottom of this. What more have you learned about the efforts to track this suspect down? I, I'm sure they have been looking for this suspect since this first broke. Uh, and the New York Times reporting this story last week. I'm sure they were trying to find the suspect. We just don't know the answer to that question, whether they were just about to arrest him and the Washington Post uh, broke that story with the young teenager or whether that prompted them to. But I'm sure uh, they were looking for him. And, and probably at this point, with, given what we know, what the Washington Post found out, somewhat easy to find because of these chat rooms and because of the evidence, some of the pictures of the classified documents, you could see things in the background. And I think that was tracked uh, to his home, uh, probably where he was arrested today. He also just spoke to this young teenager and someone else just a few days ago, just two days ago, said the teenager who the Washington Post talked to. That teenager said they were very upset because the man they called OG, that was his moniker, said uh, this might be the last time they talked. Good luck to everybody. Uh, like, this was very emotional for us, the teenager said. I mean, we had members crying uh, at this scenario, and he didn't, OG, had anything to say about it. And he said, and he was always the man uh, that had the answers. But imagine that with 21 years old, he appeared as a father figure to these uh, largely teenage boys in kind of this secret chat room. And this was the end of it. Troves and troves of classified documents that reveal things we would never want our adversaries to know. And, and this went on for months. And a lot of these documents we couldn't independently verify, but we know that there were like crease marks as if he removed them, folded them up, put them in a pocket, took images of some of these uh, truly remarkable cases. Let's bring back Aaron Katursky, if we could. Aaron, walk us through the next steps as we know them here. Now that uh, Jack Teixeira has been taken into custody by the FBI uh, near Boston, he is expected to make his initial appearance in Boston federal court. That will be sometime, we think, uh, tomorrow. The, uh, the, the prosecutors may still be working on drawing up some of the specific charges. I'm told with that the arrest, a law enforcement official telling ABC News the arrest was unrelated to what the Washington Post had reported. So although it may have appeared that the, the Post was ahead of where the government was, the FBI seems to have been on to Teixeira some other way and earlier this afternoon swooped in with a lot of firepower to make an arrest in North Dighton, Massachusetts, near the city of Taunton in the southeastern part of the state. Whit. That is really important information, uh, Aaron Katursky, for us. And again, we should say the Biden administration has pointed out that they didn't think that the information that came out of these documents publicly was especially damaging. But again, the fact that this information was leaked so easily and that it occurred over many months without them being able to track down the source uh, it is certainly something that was very concerning for the administration and across the uh, across the government.